Greetings to all. Welcome back to the course on MATLAB Simulink. So today we will be starting modeling and controller design of Viva F controlled induction motor. But before going to directly to the project, we will be learning about the basics of AC machines. Okay, so we will be learning how an AC machines work in a very short uh, span. Okay. Then we'll be learning about the induction machines. What is the working principle and what are the parts and other things. Then about the control. Okay. Then general configuration of any drive. So you can take any drive and it has few components which are common to all the drives. So we'll be getting into that. Any drive uh, means uh, AC motor, DC motor and uh, especially AC motors. Then we'll be learning about the type of motor control methods available and what method we'll be opting out of those and lastly we'll be implementing the vbif control on matlab simulin and we'll be uh, seeing the results and other things which are required for simulation okay then let's start directly to the basics of motor so motor what is a motor a motor is an electrical machine that transforms electrical energy into mechanical that we all know so on the left hand side, I have a motor working principle. So the yellow part shown here is a stator, which is common to all machines and the center part known as the rotor. So the basic principle is that the stator consists of two poles that is south and north and those two poles are rotating. Rotating in magnetic, the magnetically rotating field is generated on the stator side and that rotating magnetic field attracts the rotor magnets which are also north south magnet and they follow each other and this is the process how they are rotating so this south is attracting this north and this north is attracting this south okay and this is how the motor is rotating so this can be done in two methods like there are two types of machines depending on this it can be synchronous and asynchronous Okay, so what is synchronous? If the rotating magnetic field of stator is equal to the rotation of rotor or the mechanical rotation of rotor, then we call it synchronized. We say that rotor is synchronized with the rotating magnetic field. And if there is difference in the speed, we say it is not synchronized. Uh, that is a case of a induction motor. So a induction motor is a synchronized, asynchronous motor. Okay. So you can uh, go deep into this that what is a rotating magnetic field but you for the meanwhile to make it easy you can say that the rotor rotates in mechanical domain it actually rotates while the stator the rotation is of magnetic field so the stator remains stationary while the magnetic field of stator rotates okay so the rotor will always go behind the stator magnetic field and because the stator magnetic field is rotating so the rotor will also rotate so this is a very basic concept of motoring so on the right hand side i have shown a block diagram so what does a block diagram shows there is a power source which can be ac dc anything but for our simplicity we take it is okay this ac source supplies to motor this is the motor which is being shown by the yellow box dotted box okay the motor consists of a resistance which can be a stator resistance because stator is a winding so it will have a, some resistance and a source which is a dependent source this dependent source depends on the speed of motor and the flux so these are two important factors two important factors are speed and flux and due to their interaction a torque is generated tau on the mechanical side so this is a mechanical side this is the electrical side and in between there is a magnetic coupling happening which is because of which the electrical energy is converting to the mechanical energy. So two equations are very important. One is EMF equation. So the back EMF which is a dependent source is proportional to the or is dependent to the K constant and omega is the speed and phi is the flux. Okay, There are two important things. One is speed, one is flux. Both affect the source the voltage that is the dependent or the back EMF or the dependent source whatever you want to call it and on the output side there is torque this is torque here 
and torque depends on two things the current flowing into the motor which is known as ia armature current and flux so you can say the flux is very very important more the flux more the emf more the torque more the speed more the emf more the current more the torque so this is a elementary equation which you need to learn and need to understand if you remove k constant if you remove k constant then these are proportional to the their respective variables okay so this is a general diagram of any motor or not general diagram this is a descriptive diagram uh, which shows how the working of motor is happening now we go to the induction motor so induction motor as the name should suggest it induces something okay so as i have already known told you that here the rotor rotates due to the interaction between rotating magnetic field rotating magnetic field is from the stator and the rotor magnetic field which is induced by the stator onto the rotor okay so there are two things one is stator rotating magnetic field and this rotating magnetic field when induces a rotor rotating magnetic field or simply the rotor magnetic field these two fields interact and the rotor starts to rotate okay so there is a induction and there is a reaction to that induction so that is why the name induction motor is given so there is a stator core this is stator core these are the winding stator winding this yellow part these are the stator winding this green and the metallic part or the copper color part these both constitute of the rotor okay these two comprises of the rotor okay so most of you are definitely from the electrical background so i am not going deep into the induction motor but this is basically the induction motor and this is a squirrel cage induction motor so there can be two type of uh, rotor topology one is squirrel cage type and another is wound rotor type so we'll be focusing on the squirrel cage type which is shown in here in the figure so why induction motors are used is because their construction cost is less and also maintenance is also less compared to the pm pm means permanent magnet machines okay and also the induction machines have been widely applied to the commercial evs such as tesla model 3 model s bmw i3 and these are the latest motor uh, not the latest motor but very robust motor so currently most of the car are switching to the pmsm but again there is a trend coming that let's go for the pm less motor pm means permanent magnet less so there the contender are basically two which are induction motor and switch reluctance motor these are the two contender which are magnet free and are also uh, good in performance okay so this is a general control scheme for n phase induction motor why n phase here you can see that 1 2 3 4 5 6 these are six leg so this can be a six phase motor okay but you can made make simply a three phase induction motor also this is a six phase induction motor but i am showing you the general control scheme for n phase n phase means any phase so if you want to go for the three phase three phase means r y and p these are the three phases so what are the three phases is 1 2 3 so let us take first three legs and this is an inverter the pink part is an inverter so what is an inverter inverter consists of as switches this is one leg known as this is known as leg one leg two leg and three leg each leg corresponding to r y and b and this will be going to the directly to the a three phase induction motor and this is connected to a battery okay so this is a general scheme of control so how we control the induction motor is we are having a controller which is shown here and controller takes in some input which can be current speed voltage anything depending on the control scheme so suppose here our controller is taking currents some currents four current three current whatever the control scheme is 
uh, the underlying concept is the controller takes input some input maybe speed torque anything and it according to the control algorithm the control algorithm is the control algorithm gives out the gate pulses what are the gate pulses those gate pulses are given to the switches these are the switches so for a three phase induction motor drive there will be three lag and three lag means each lag consists of two switch one two three four five six so how many gate pulses we will be requiring six gate pulses okay so we will be saying that one lag or the r lag will consist of two switches that means top and bottom top and bottom top and bottom okay here you can also see this is known as top and this is known as bottom anything you can see this is known as top this is known as bottom so there are six legs so 12 switches so 12 gate pulses are required so therefore i have written here gate pulses g1 to g12 this is what the gate pulses are given and because of the switching the output voltage is to the the voltage to the induction motor is controlled and its angle also controlled and everything uh, can be done using an inverter and a motor so this is a very general control scheme and where the inverter is finding its source the source can be a dc source which can be a battery which can be a battery in case of evs like in case of evs for railway it can be a rectifier rectified ac so anything can be there okay so this is a very very general control scheme we'll be using everywhere for every type of control even uh, we'll be uh, learning next in the slides what are the type of controls so these are the type of speed control available in ac motors okay so the ac motor consists of two types of control which is known as scalar control and vector control as the name suggests what is scalar control scalar control means only magnitude okay and vector control means magnitude plus angle okay there are two things magnitude and magnitude plus angle so vector control is magnitude plus angle so in scalar control what we do only the magnitude of control quantity quantity uh, whatever the element we want to control suppose i want to control the induction motor input voltage so i will be controlling only the magnitude part of the voltage suppose i want to run motor at 400 volt then at 350 volt then at 300 volt but i will not bothered about the angle the phase angle of the magnitude we know that in ac there are two things in ac uh, there are two things what is one is magnitude and another another thing is angle so i will be bothered of magnitude only here i will be bothered about magnitude as well as angle here i am not bothered about the phase difference okay so in scalar control there are two type of control okay which are v by f control the voltage to frequency ratio is kept maintained and second is hysteresis current control where the current is controlled so in this case the controlling quantity is voltage and is this in this case the controlling quantity is current which current stator current and here voltage which voltage stator voltage okay so the input voltage which is i am calling stator voltage okay and then the input current is stator current similarly here in case of magnitude and angle are controlled in case of vector control there can be two type of basically there are two methods one is field oriented control and another one is direct torque control and there are other modern methods also model predictive control and all but these are the two methods which are can be used one is field oriented control where the voltage is controlled and one is direct torque control where directly torque is controlled and how torque can be controlled is by controlling the current okay these are the two basically method for vector and scalar control are two different method <clears throat> so what we will be uh, doing we will be focusing on the v by f control we can also have a different totally different course on the speed control of ac motor because this is a very very wide topic but we will be focusing on the only one topic which is v by f control of induction motor okay 